When an artifact is discovered, it represents either the end of a story or the beginning of one. It might be the case that the artifact answers a question posed by historians or archaeologists and can be understood immediately. That's fine, but we prefer the other types of artifacts. Those that provoke questions and create new questions to answer and puzzles to solve. You're about to see plenty of those artifacts in this mystery packed video. When is a seashell not a seashell? Amazingly, the answer to that question might be when the seashell in question is actually one of the oldest musical instruments in the world. The seashell is around 18,000 years old and was discovered in Marsoula's cave in the Pyrenees during the 1940s. It's only recently that its historical significance has been reevaluated. The ancient sea snail shell is now thought to be a cultural relic of the Magdalenian culture, who lived in the region at the end of the last glacial maximum, and may have used it as a wind instrument. The theory is based on the fact that the shell's tip is broken in a way that appears to be deliberate, with a perforated cut at the other end accompanied by red pigmentation. When blown, the shell produces a note close to C-sharp. It may once even have had a mouthpiece of some kind attached to it. Music has been important to human beings for almost as long as human beings have existed. And now, it seems we were making music long before we were creating instruments of the kind we'd recognize today. The idea that Christopher Columbus was the first European traveler to find the Americas is now known to be wrong. But it seems like we find out more about just how wrong that supposition is with each passing year. Take these glass trade beads, for example, which were discovered in the most arctic regions of Alaska during the 1950s. Like the shell we just looked at, they've recently been re-examined and found to be Venetian in origin. Given the fact they were found at an archaeological site of Punyik Point in the Brooks Range, that means they almost certainly arrived in Alaska several decades before Columbus set off on his epic journey. The technology to create these glass beads wasn't available to the Native Americans, and so can only have come from abroad. Plant fibers wrapped around some of the beads have been carbon dated, and from there, we know that the plant was alive during the early 1400s. The beads definitely came from Italy, and they definitely arrived before Columbus. They probably traveled all the way across Asia before being traded across the Bering Sea from the easternmost point of Russia. Many of the world's ancient civilizations and cultures had their own form of writing, and we are yet to translate them all. One of the most troublesome of the undeciphered scripts is Linear A, which is based on logos and glyphs, and was used on Crete during the Bronze Age. This was the earliest written language of the great Minoan civilization. It later evolved into Linear B, which was deciphered during the 1950s, but Linear A remains an enigma. It's thought that the Minoans used it exclusively for administrative purposes, with each symbol representing a syllable, rather than a letter or a sound. Confusingly, though, some of the 400-plus known symbols appear to be picture words similar to Chinese ideograms. There are countless examples of artifacts that bear the script, and yet no equivalent of the Rosetta Stone that would allow us to understand their meaning. The whole history of the Minoan civilization might be encoded in these artifacts, but we don't have the key to the code. Archaeologists and scientists now hope that sophisticated computer programs might succeed where human beings have failed, but we don't appear to be close to a positive result yet. Here in the 21st century, it's becoming increasingly common for men to use face creams and makeup. That isn't the start of a new habit, though. It's the rediscovery of an old one. In fact, it appears that men in China were using face cream as a cosmetic more than 2,700 years ago. The discovery of an ancient form of makeup, or face cream in a bronze jar, happened at the archaeological site of Liujiawa, northern China in January 2021. Archaeologists and historians believe that the cream was used to make the faces of men appear to be white. This part of the site is known to have once been a nobleman's region of the ancient city, which was part of the vassal state of Rui, 
That implies that the use of the cream might have been restricted only to those of the ruling class. The cream itself is made from a combination of animal fats and a substance called moon milk, which is made from carbonate mud taken from caves. The mud turns white as it dries, hence the name. The reasons why an ancient Chinese aristocrat might want to whiten his face are unknown, other than perhaps being a way of distinguishing himself from the commoners around him. We are back on the topic of mysterious ancient inscriptions now, and we're heading to the Sinai Desert to find them. This combination of drawings and inscriptions on artifacts found at Kuntelet Arjud was first observed in 1975, but the research that's been conducted in the years since hasn't gotten experts any closer to deciphering them. Some historians believe that the drawings might be representations of the biblical figures Yahweh and Asherah, but that hasn't yet been confirmed. The bulk of the inscriptions appear on ceramic pithos, but depictions of animals, humans, and gods appear accompanied by mysterious inscriptions on many other objects recovered from the site. Some of the language used is Hebrew, but it combines with elements of Phoenician and becomes unintelligible in the process. The word Asherah appears several times, but historians and biblical scholars can't agree on what that means. Some believe Asherah was the wife of God, while others say it's just a word that means sacred. It's also possible that the inscriptions were made either before or after the pictures were drawn, meaning the two things may not be related. It's a puzzle for which we don't yet have the right pieces. As we're trying to unravel the mysteries of the Phoenician alphabet, we should probably talk about the sarcophagus of King Aharam. The inscriptions on the surface of the sarcophagus is a curse and is also thought to be the earliest known example of written Phoenician in any form. The limestone artifact was found in 1923 during excavation work in Byblos, Lebanon, and is around 3,000 years old. We're paraphrasing a little here, but the inscription says that if anyone uncovers the coffin, then the kingdom of the guilty party will be overthrown and their place in the afterlife will be forfeit. The French archaeologist who made the discovery didn't have a kingdom to overthrow, but he wasn't the first to trifle with the curse. By the time he found it, the tomb had already been looted centuries earlier. Whether it brought any misfortune upon those looters is unknown. As this is the first recorded use of the full Phoenician alphabet, historians wonder whether the language was finalized at the time of the king's passing as a way of paying tribute to him. Why is it that the ancient Egyptians developed a habit of building tiny figurines to place in the tombs of their deceased loved ones? It's commonly believed that the statuettes, known as shabtis, were intended to become servants for the deceased in the afterlife. But might there be more to it than that? Perhaps there's a clue in the name. The word shabti might come from sha, which translates as to command. It might also come from the word swoop, which means stick. The idea that they were supposed to represent servants comes from the fact that they start to appear in Egyptian tombs at around the same time that sacrificed human servants stop appearing in them. Presumably, someone decided that sacrificing human servants in this way was a little excessive. Later examples of shabtis are covered in inscriptions that are thought to represent spells that implies they were capable of greater functionality than mere servitude, and yet they often carry tiny tools, including hoes and baskets, which goes back to the idea of them performing manual labor. It's curious that they're still not understood, despite so many of them being discovered. The people of ancient Norway were skilled when it came to manufacturing weapons, but not all of those weapons were used in combat. The Bronze Age artifact, known as the Hodoya Spear, represents some of the finest weapons manufacturing of 2,900 years ago, but it was almost certainly never used in battle. The spear was discovered on the marshland of Hodoya, a Norwegian island in the Namsen Fjord, by road workers in 1922. As it was covered by a stone, archaeologists believe it was buried in the marsh deliberately. That would explain why it's far too ornate to have been a weapon. 
At two feet long, it was larger than the average spear of the time, and the decorative border is too elaborate for something that would have been considered an everyday hunting tool. Historians believe that Norwegians saw marshes as a doorway between the land of the living and the land of the gods, so the burial of this beautiful spear was probably intended to be a tribute. What we don't know is whether it was made specifically for this purpose, or whether it was buried after its previous owner, presumably someone powerful, had passed away. Is the Pythagoras cup an ancient practical joke, or an ancient way of trying to ensure that people drank in moderation? Also known as the Tantalus cup, the cleverly designed drinking vessel begins to empty itself when the liquid poured into it reaches a certain level. Some people say it was invented by the genius Pythagoras of Samos, although there's a lack of verified evidence to support that suggestion. According to the tale, Pythagoras had grown tired of watching his workers get drunk after overfilling their cups with wine. To solve the problem, he built a cup that would hold wine just fine if it was poured up to the indicated level, but dump the whole cupful out of the bottom if they dared to keep pouring. Pythagoras might have been attempting to teach his workers not to be greedy, although he might just have wanted to make sure they remained sober while at work. The design of the cup is deceptively sophisticated. It uses a hidden U-shaped pipe at its center to create pressure, which increases as more liquid is introduced. When the pressure becomes too great, the liquid escapes out of the base of the cup. Whether it's a practical joke or a sobriety aid, it's ingenious. You might have noticed that within the past 12 months, mysterious metal monuments have developed a strange habit of appearing overnight at locations all over the planet and disappearing just as quickly. The most famous of them was found in the Utah desert of the United States of America in 2020, but further examples are still appearing to this day. The most recent of them turned up in Seinlerfa, Turkey in February 2021 not far from the famous archaeological site of Gobekli Tepe. This slab is a little different from the one that showed up in Utah. It's 10 feet tall and features an inscription, written in the ancient Gokturk alphabet that translates into English as, Look to the sky if you want to see the moon. The overnight placement of the monument is almost certainly a publicity stunt, but the problem is that nobody can work out what it's supposed to be promoting. Three months before the appearance of the Turkish monolith, one was found in Romania, and nobody solved the mystery of who put that one there or why either. It seems that somebody somewhere is playing an elaborate series of practical jokes on a global audience. Perhaps we'll find out what it's all about in the fullness of time. You might have to suspend your disbelief for a moment when we discuss this next artifact, but bear with us because it's a story worth hearing. This carved stone is the so-called Roswell Rock, so named because it was found in 2004, a little over 20 miles away from the site of the alleged UFO crash landing of 1947. It's now generally accepted that the Roswell UFO incident was a well-executed hoax, but the existence of this rock can't be explained away as easily as faked video footage. The stone has interesting magnetic properties, when a magnet is placed over its thick end, it spins clockwise, but it spins anti-clockwise if a magnet is held above the thinner end. The moon symbols on its surface are also thought to be significant, as they're almost identical to symbols that have appeared in crop circles all over North America. Scientists and archaeologists are positive that it's a hoax, but they're struggling to identify any marks on its surface from any tool or machine used in its manufacture. Not even one single abrasion can be found, even when the artifact is examined under a microscope. A hoax is still the most likely explanation, but the mystery about how it was made persists. The Talkati Stone takes its name from the ancient temple it was found within, which was discovered in 1916 on the island of Malta. The temple is 5,000 years old, so there's no reason to believe the limestone slab isn't the same age. Archaeologists believe that this is just one piece of what was once a much larger slab. 
Given the presence of stars and constellations on the piece we have, it might even have been a complete star chart. German professor Kai Helge Wirth, who's had the opportunity to study the tall Cadi stone in person, thinks it might be even more significant than that. He confirms that the stone marks the positions of the stars in the night sky, and also the signs of the zodiac, but he also believes that the lines on its surface represent the movement of currents in the Mediterranean Ocean. According to his theory, the complete artifact might have been used by the ancient Phoenicians when they were planning major expeditions across the sea. We know the Phoenicians were an advanced seafaring race by the standards of 5,000 years ago. Was this broken limestone slab the secret at the heart of their skill? Subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications, and you will be the first to know when a new video comes out. Thank you for watching and see you soon.